Hello friends, welcome to Expert Medical Coding. In today's video, we're going to learn about ascites. We're going to see what is ascites is, what are the symptoms of it, causes, complications, test, treatment, and prevention. So let's get started. What is ascites? Ascites is an abnormal buildup of fluid in the abdominal cavity. Now let us see the symptoms of ascites, and they are swelling in the abdomen, weight gain, sense of fullness. Abdominal pain and bloating, back pain, constipation, sense of heaviness, nausea and vomiting, swelling in the lower legs, shortness of breath, fever and hemorrhoids. Now let us see the causes of ascites. The first cause is cirrhosis of the liver. The most common cause of ascites is cirrhosis of the liver. Porter vein is the main vein that supplies blood to your liver. When your liver doesn't work like it should due to cirrhosis, Pressure builds up in the portal vein. The high pressure causes fluid to leak out of your veins into your belly and collect there causes ascites. The next cause is the cancer. When ascites is due to cancer or if the fluid in the abdomen has cancer cells, it is often called malignant ascites or malignant peritoneal effusion. Ascites develops most often with ovarian, uterine, cervical, colorectal, stomach, pancreatic breast and liver cancers. Cancer that spread to the liver can also cause ascites. Ascites is caused by cancer cells that spread to and irritate the thin lining of the inner wall of the abdomen called peritoneum. Cancer cells that block blood flow through the liver. Next cause is the congestive heart failure, increased venous pressure. In congestive heart failure, the heart is unable to pump blood effectively, leading to a backlog of blood in the veins. This can result in increased pressure in the veins that drain into the heart, such as the inferior vena cava. When the pressure in these veins becomes too high, it can cause fluid to leak out of the blood vessels and into the abdominal cavity, causes ascites. The next cause is kidney failure. When your liver doesn't work like it should, pressure builds up in the portal vein. Over time, the raised pressure affects your kidneys too. When these organs can't remove excess salt from your blood, Fluid builds up in your body. The extra fluid leaks out of your veins and collects in your belly causes ascites. The next cause is pancreatic diseases. Pancreatic ascites refers to the accumulation of peritoneal fluid in the presence of pancreatic disease and is usually secondary to pancreatic cirrhosis or pancreatic duct dehiscence. The next cause is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis causes inflammation of the peritoneum and causes fluid leakage out of the capillaries. In addition to this, it also increases portal pressure. The next cause is obesity. Obesity is indirectly linked to the ascites. Obesity leads to the fat buildup and causes fatty liver disease, which might lead to the development of ascites. The next cause is type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes could damage the blood vessels of the liver and might result in the development of portal hypertension, which causes ascites. The other causes which include portal hypertension, portal vein thrombosis, hepatic vein obstruction, chronic hepatitis C or B infection, alcohol overuse over many years and fatty liver disease. Now let us discuss about the complications of ascites. The first complication is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. SBP is a serious life-threatening bacterial infection of the ascites characterized by fever and stomach pain. Next complication is Ascites related hernias. Increased abdominal pressure due to the fluid buildup can lead to umbilical or inguinal hernias. Next complication is pleural effusion. Ascites can accumulate fluid between the lungs and chest cavity. Next complication is electrolyte imbalance. Portal hypertension and sodium water imbalances in ascites conditions might lead to electrolyte imbalance. The next complication is weight loss and protein malnutrition. Due to the early satiety and impairment of protein synthesis, ascites might develop weight loss and protein malnutrition. The next complication is bleeding. Upper and lower gastrointestinal bleeding may be seen in ascetic patients. The next complication is kidney failure. Severe decompensated cirrhosis patients with ascites may develop heptorenal syndrome. Now let us discuss about the tests which are done for ascites. Lab tests. Lab tests will be done to check for laboratory parameters such as complete blood count, serum albumin test, 
bacterial culture test by bedside inoculation, urinalysis, liver function test, renal function test, coagulation test and serum electrolytes. The imaging tests which will be done including chest x-ray, ultrasound, CT scan and MRI scan. The next test is diagnostic paracentesis. A small needle be inserted through the abdominal wall after local anesthesia to remove fluid to be examined in the laboratory. This test is called a paracentesis. The fluid removed will be examined for signs of infection or cancer and to determine the cause for the fluid accumulation. Now let us discuss about the treatment. Diuretics. Your doctor might prescribe you water pills, also called as diuretics, to help flush the extra fluid and salt from your body. Two of the most common diuretics used to treat ascites are furosemide that is Lasix and spironolactone that is aldactone. Next treatment option is therapeutic paracentesis. In this procedure, a doctor uses a long thin needle to remove the excess fluid from your abdomen. They insert the needle through the skin and into the abdominal cavity. You may need this if you have severe or recurrent ascites or if symptoms doesn't improve with diuretics. The next treatment option is transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt that is TIPS. The doctor places a wire mesh tube called a stent into a vein in your liver. A balloon inflates inside the stent to open it up. The stent allows your blood to flow more easily through your liver and other organs in your belly. Next treatment option is liver transplant. You may need a liver transplant if you have a liver failure from cirrhosis. A transplant removes your damaged liver and replaces it with a healthy one from a donor. Now let us discuss about prevention of ascites. The following measures can prevent ascites which include limiting salt in the diet, reducing sodium intake, exercising regularly, limiting fluid intake, getting vaccinations for diseases such as pneumococcal, hepatitis and influenza, avoid taking NSAIDs if the patient is suffering from liver cirrhosis. Weight observation is to be done in order to get rid of weight gain. Avoid recreational drugs in order to reduce the occurrence of hepatitis. Taking a well-balanced diet. Avoid highly processed foods and consume whole food. Avoid smoking and alcohol. Please like, share and subscribe to Expert Medical Coding. Thanks for watching.